Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and just as promised, joining us live all the way from down under. It's my good friends Evan and Stephen Strong. Yes, indeed. Now, let's see if we can get the guys up there. There they are. How you doing, Stephen? Very well, thank you. And Evan's just getting dressed and he'll be with us in a sec. He's just been for a run. Oh, Great to no, see you again, Kev. See these people out for their runs, Stephen. Damn, I, I feel tired just thinking about it, dude. I really do. <laughs> I'm telling you, he was telling me he was going to nip away to the gym. And I'm thinking, wow, man. And I, I, tell, I'm telling you, rather him than me. Rather him than me. I must admit. <laughs> but how you been doing, man? Um, I've not been giving it the big build up today. I would like to think most of the KBS audience know who you guys are. They can find out yep. your work at ForgottenOrigin.com and OurAlienAncestry.net. But what's been going on with you, man? It's great to see you again. It's good to see you looking well. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but I'm still up and I'm still alive. But uh, Will's a, a subjective subject. Uh, yeah, look, we're good. There's um, been some major developments in our country which um, have changed how we're doing our next presentation and we're going to put on a free one a couple of days before december so there's been a bit of activity down here isn't there Evan? yes there has good to see oh, you gosh. brother good to see you how you doing man good good i'm liking the i'm liking the look how did the how, <laughs> how, did, how, did, how did the gym session go yeah no good um yeah i ended up going for a run actually and got rained on a little bit but that's all right it's quite humid here at the moment so yeah good anyway. stuff now i'll get this fitted so we can see both ears and i'm not cutting your head off but what's been going on guys i know you're planning something free before the end of the year and mm. i also i also believe um these rocks that we've talked about before we've talked about the the, the killing rocks you've mentioned before they're now starting to to play a part in everything going on, right? So with that in mind, I'm going to hand it over to you, boys. What's been going on, man? All right. Uh, I'm going to start by actually including you in our, our presentation, Kev, if you don't mind. I've done that before, and because we've spoken so often, it's sort of like a second home for us. Look, um, you pro we're all aware of the fact that the last year, a couple of years, have been quite, um, how can I put it, trying and traumatic. But something happened uh, about a week and a half ago, which led on to us putting on a presentation, I think, on the 22nd of December. Uh, 21st for you guys, 22nd yeah. for us. Okay, yeah. And it, it came out of a... It started, it didn't come out of it, started in an article that was on the front page of the largest Australian newspaper called the Sydney Morning Herald. And I'm going to hold up a picture before we start. I hope I can hold it up so you can see it. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. And it's of a young girl, oh, gone the wrong way. Hang on. There you there go. go. Yeah, I see her now. Yeah. It's a young girl there, and I, if you can, Kev, I'd like you to look at her face for a couple of seconds, okay? And then once we've done that and you've seen her face, I'm going to explain it was that face that made us put on a free presentation. And when you look at that face, I need to give it some context. And then I'm going to hold the picture up again, and I'm going to ask you to see if you can read into that face an expression or an emotion that sits behind it. Now, she happens to be the co-school captain of a school which I, I know is quite bespoke, which is called, where is it? Um, where is the place? Ah, Rose Bay Secondary College. Not high school, college. So that would be Southern Posh if you're in... Um... The UK, I guess. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. southern posh, mate. Places where we don't normally walk. <laughs> These kids, and this is the captain. Now, I've got to tell you, the high school certificate in Australia is the last year in high school before you go out and get a job or go to university, and that is the most important exam these kids do. It sets up the rest of her life. Now, this is a very attractive young lady. She's the captain. And she should have a massive smile smashed across her face. But 
I'm going to read a little bit, then Evan's going to read exactly what she said. And the three correspondents on page one said something like this. There's a relief that a year from hell is close to ending. Now, Evan, would you read from that point on, please, from down from where she starts speaking? Now, that was written by the people who wrote the article. Now, Evan's going to read you some quotes from this young lady. Uh, many students just want the exams to be over, said Harriet Chand. We have found a collective sense of mental exhaustion and a lack of motivation, which has led to feelings of unpreparedness. Most students are exhausted and lacking spirit. Is there a bit down the bottom? You got all of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and she also asked that they call off the higher school certificate because for the last two years, this these kids, now I've got to remind you of something. I was a high school teacher. These are the two years where the kids have cars, where they have parties, and socially, this is the most important two years of their life. So what have we given them, Kev? We've given them lockdown, long periods of non-face-to-face -face teaching, periods where you wear a mask, where you can't stand in, close to anyone, where you cannot have a party, where you cannot go outside, where you can't do anything. And these kids are done in. We have actually... I'm not going to make a comment about vaccines, whether they're right or wrong, because that's not the point in this. I'm not even touching that. I'm not making a comment. It's everyone's choice to do what they want. What I am going to comment about is what we've done to these kids in relation to that and whether this is the best way to bring up our young. You know, um, Stephen, I've, I've got a 19-year-old son and um, while all this has been going on, he's left school. He's at his 18th birthday and over here that means you can drink. Usually that would mean his dad takes him, <laughs> takes him out for a pint, a little whiskey, whatever. Yeah. Not been able to do that. Speaking to a friend in no. Canada yesterday, her son just turned 19. Haven't had well, a, then you a understand this yep. really well, Big kid, time because you're, you're feeling it at home. Yep. It's funny, a person down the road from us has got a, a kid that's not doing well at school and in year 12, and the kid's just lost all interest in schooling and everything, just doesn't care. What we've done to our children, Kev, is we've taken away the joy of living. It's really important we understand that. And it really resonated with me. And then a day after that, I was talking to a friend of mine and he was talking to his grandson because he can't go to another state because we're locked out of that state, aren't we, Evan? Mm -hmm. We can't go to any other state. Everyone's locked away from everyone. And he said that this is a really sweet, unviolent, never punches, never gets involved in a fight, very, very quiet, passive child. And they were talking about Lego. And in the middle of this Zoom cast they were doing, because they can't see them, he says to them, I hate, and I'll say the word C and it ends in D and you can put the rest in, I want to kill it. Now, this kid hasn't gone to school. And already, the first time he's used that word, he now wants to kill something. And the child in year 12, the young lady in year 12, something's been killed. Her motivation, her spirit, her, her joy has been taken away from her. And when you look at that picture, and I'll hold it up again, what you see, there's no smile there. There's no sparkle in this kid's eye. It has really smashed them around. And I was sitting around thinking about this the last few days before this happened, and I thought to myself, this is just wrong, Kev. What we've done to our kids now is criminal. And you would know about this personally because you've got a kid who's the same age as this one I'm showing you at the moment. Yep. Where's the smile? This kid's supposed to. Rose Bay, one of the most elite high schools in the country, she's the co-captain, mate. Her future should be stunning. Yep. And she should be beaming, thinking, oh, I'm only going to get 98 out of 100 for the high school certificate. Shall I be a vet or a doctor, Evan? I don't know. You know I, I no, think back to when I was 19, <laughs> guys. I mean, this is when I was out. Sowing the, the, the wild oats, drinking, making friends, oh. seeing a bit of the world. It's when you're it's when you're you're really starting to grow up, it's your real important years, and all that's been quashed. That's got stolen, to have an effect. Stolen from them by people who are running the show. They don't care. By the way, they were doing the, the higher school certificate and they begged, they begged, can we take the masks off when we're doing it? 
can we take the mask off? Because a lot of kids have got glasses. It fogs off. They have to take their glasses off. They have to clean them. And they are losing time writing their exam papers because of it. And what did the government say? No, wear the bloody things. Put them on for the whole time. And if you take them off, you'll fail completely. We will take you out of that room because you've broken the rules and you will fail. And for the rest of your life, you will be a failure because of it. Now, that to me was criminal. It really was. So that set me in a path where I was thinking, what can I do? Now, all of that is fact. Now, the next part is a bit of a, a push to an extent, but most of your listeners would be aware of the fact that we have rocks and we have quite a few artefacts. Well, on mass, and yes, I, the rocks do communicate with me. So do the rings, so do the skulls, so do the pendants and all the different things we've got. And I thought as a collective, they told me they wanted to join the fight. And I remember that night, I thought myself, fight? Evan, have we got rocks that can kill? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got rocks that can kill. And I was thinking, what? Am I going back to doing what I've done in past lives again? No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to fight. And I couldn't work out what they meant by they want to join the fight because I kept thinking, no, you guys are dangerous. I know what you can do. This is not what we're doing anymore. So that night I went to bed and I placed Cannabis a Cannabis Solution donated $19.99 and a a through Super Chats. Thanks and for I said, the Paleo I Americans for what amount. was taken from you say them. To me, you paleo want to Australians do about in the house this, well, say I don't you know what, I, what you can do. You have to tell me. And in the morning, ladies and gentlemen, I've been told, and I'm going to share with you basically what they said they wanted to do. We have tried once when we put the rocks in formation, but this is not what this one's about. They said they want to be put in formation, but they want the, the skulls in there. They want the rings in there. They want the pendants in there. They want the bone from Nefertaru, Khufu's son. They want them all placed inside one large circle. And I am to face that circle and direct it straight towards Uluru. And what they've said is this. They believe, and I'm not going to argue with them about this, that the world is in need of a massive dose of positive, pure energy to give people to give people strength. And for those who are hanging on the borderline thinking, oh, no, I'm not sure, oh, I don't know, it will give them the strength to step over. And what we're finding around the world is people are protesting, not so much about what happens in your arm, but they're protesting about what the government is doing in dividing society into a two-class system. I think, um, who was it that said the system, we've got the garbage, which is the upper class, and the trash, which is us, the lower class. Um, I think it was J.P. Oh, so J.P. Spears said that. Yeah. He was you doing know, a promo for we've Australian mentioned tourism. The, we've mentioned the yeah. two roads before, the two rivers as well. And um, in the time I've been working with you guys, and it's been a delight every time you've come on, uh, as some of the highlights we're creating on the show here, can't thank you enough. But I've been watching well, as this the, one. I've been watching the world, and um, yeah. aside from these assholes that run the planet, they've, they've done a really good job of dividing all of us. They really have, that... and I can't think of a better time for people to get over your little differences. Just. Get over them, and we need to come back together and throw our hands up this in the what air, this say about, whatever, yeah, and yeah, move you've on. Got it. Yep. This is what they want to do. They said that we've been split. We're fearful of each other. We're saying things like, I wish you would go away. Oh, you people who don't do this. And I don't care personally. Everyone's got the right to do what they want as far as medicine is concerned. But there should not be punishment. And there is. There's massive punishment. And there's segregation. There's all the things. It's apartheid. It's it's 1936, and particularly in Australia, it is 1936 in Nazi Germany. What they want to do is they want to sit in formation. And what they've told us to do is this. Mm. We're to put on a show, which is going to cost us money because we've got a multi-stream, and we're not charging a cent for this one on the December the 22nd. No money's been charged for this. And what we're going to do is it turns out the time it is on, 
is appalling for us in Australia, but fantastic for the Northern Hemisphere. It's really good for you, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. It's not three o'clock in the morning in Iceland anymore now. Everyone on the other, because it's three o'clock in the morning in Australia. So we have to get up at two o'clock to set this up. And what we're going to do is we're going to put on a one-hour demonstra- one show. And we're going to put on, say, about... Half an hour before, I'm going to introduce people, for those who haven't met them before, to all the new participants in our big circle of about 100 artefacts. And what I'm asking each person that joins in to do this, and you've got to register, but you just register, you put your name down, it costs you nothing. It will cost us a fair bit to put on, but that's not the point of this. We don't want anybody... It hindered in any way. A lot of people don't have a lot of money. They can't afford $27. I get that. But you can afford nothing. You can go into your wallet and take nothing out, and it will not hurt you in the slightest. We'll pay for this. And what we're asking is that you come and join us. Now, whether you want to meditate and focus on the rocks and the skulls and the rings that we've set in that circle, or whether you want to send it to a sacred place, because every sacred place on this planet is humming at the moment, but it needs a surge of energy. And people need to remember the only thing, the only energy it can feed off comes from the beings, the species that have created the mess. Because when you make a mess, you have to clean it up yourself, and it's our job to clean it up. And what we're asking is, yes, last time we had 15 million people meditating towards the rock. We're going to make it at exactly the same time, the summer solstice, and the rocks have asked for us to do it again the year after, which will be the third time. And this is what's really interesting. They said after that, we don't need any more. It's done. So I don't know if that means that soon after the third one, not this one, but the one after that at the end of next year, I don't know if that means that's when the change is coming or not. I'm reading between the lines there, but they made it very clear. They needed us to put back into this this equation, this spiritual equation, on the 22nd of uh, December this year, and then again next year and after that, the work is done. So we're putting a call out to all of your listeners and everyone else, if your listeners can tell others about this, they go to our website, they can find out, or Facebook, whatever it is, I don't know, Evan will tell you at the finish, and join us. It costs you nothing, but in return, you can become part of the solution, not the problem. Because I want, to think, want you to think about something. You look at the leaders we have at the moment, I was watching Boris Johnson yesterday doing a story about Peppa Pig, and all he could do was forget his lines and saying, forgive me, forgive me. We would be better off with Peppa Pig running the parliament at this point. That's what I kept thinking. Is that the new advisor for Boris Johnson? Then we've got a gentleman called Biden who has a lot of trouble remembering any lines. And then we come to Australia... And we have a leader here whose name is Scott Morrison, who's considered the world liar, (laughs) according to the French. Ask them what they think of him. And this guy, all he's on about is power and also fear. And I'm looking around at the world today and said, right now we have the worst calibre of leaders we've ever had on this planet. That's what we're being led by. And hundreds of years from now, they're going to look at these days and look at these leaders and say... What were people thinking in even in electing these people? Well, let's fix it up. Now, I, I want to make the point. I think people going, and we're going to a, a, a march on Saturday this week. I think that's fantastic. Keep doing it. Keep the pressure going. And that keeps people aware. But I want to make the point. That will not heal the planet. It may bring people together, but we have to work with the planet. And we proved, and you know this, Kev, we proved that that last ceremony worked. And we know 15 million people involved, and we're calling everyone back again. And this time, bring your friends, bring your neighbours, bring your relations, and say to them, what do you got to lose? It's either 8 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, in the morning, or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, all the way around the Northern Hemisphere. What have you got to lose to sit down for half an hour to meditate, to think solely good thoughts. And I want to make the point, there's two things about this that still stand the same. The same rules apply as last time. 
whether it is you hold two rocks in your hands, you're with nature. Whether it is that you stand on the ground when you're doing this or sit in a chair with your feet on the ground or whether you sit near a tree or you hold a tree or you sit by the beach or you sit by the creek, it doesn't matter where. But you can't sit on top at the fourth level of a, a high-rise flat or something like that and there's concrete all around and nylon carpets. You must make contact with the planet because if you want to send your energy... Remember, Uluru sits in the dirt and the whole of this planet is linked together. The ley lines, the song lines, whatever you call them, are open. If you just want to go down to a sacred site and meditate on that, that will work too. If you want to look at the rocks we've got for half an hour, and we'll put them on for half an hour meditation, at the end of that meditation, we just turned it off. I won't be speaking after the event. I'll introduce some of the participants before the event. And then what I'm asking people to do when they come to this meditation, I want you to lay down your spears. By that I mean, don't go there feeling bitter, frustrated, angry. That energy is not what the planet needs. We have a shitload of that energy already on a daily basis. We don't need more. So what we're asking everyone to do is to take another leap of faith. And I want to make the point, when we did the first ceremony, all the way up there, I kept saying, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced. This time I'm going to say the opposite. I do know, I am sure, and I am convinced because it worked the first time. And those rocks that I'm using, I want to make the point that six of the, seven of those rocks were taken to Uluru the day before the ceremony. I took them to a men's site, a women's site, and a family site, and I laid those rocks down so I made sure, and I gave them ceremony, so I made sure that connection between Uluru and those rocks is complete. They will be sitting inside the circle with so many other sacred objects and all they will be doing is sending positive energy to that rock. Now, if people want to just look at that, what we've got, and we'll try and put a tripod and put the thing, the camera inside the actual I've circle. Got it a tripod. <laughs> yeah, Evan will do that. And we're asking yeah. you to join us. And all you've got to do is go to what Evan tells you about later on and you will be able to join us for free. Just register your name. That's all you've got to do in about a week out. Is it, Evan? Yeah, well, look, what, what we plan to do is, is yet as many different um, YouTube channels, Facebook groups, Facebook pages, all co-streaming it. So, obviously, it'll be on our Forgotten Origin group and our uh, Forgotten Origins YouTube it, it channel. It'll be on our uh, Kev so Baker Show YouTube channel if you guys want true. help. Yep. Oh, we do. We do, Kev, and we were going to ask you. We're going to put the pressure on you in the middle of this. Oh, guys, say, honestly, it's an honour to even have you guys on the show, let alone, like, almost classy friends. Now, I know we've not really spoke off there, but there's a familiarity. I, I really like you guys. I could get on with you, as I know that for a fact. We'd have a nice good beer together. But oh, yeah. I, along with the rest of the world, have been looking from the outside in, and everyone has been saying, what the bleep has been going on down in Australia because the whole world's been going mad we get that I don't think enough people are aware of the fact that something highly significant something very very profound did occur when you done that ceremony towards the end of last year and for me I'm out there at the best of times I don't think it's any accident any coincidence that you guys have felt the, the full force of the jackpot that they've come down even harder on people in Australia than anywhere else in the world, in my opinion. Why? Oh, you're right. Because you guys are at the centre of these massive changes that are taking place right now. And again, I don't think it's any coincidence that we've seen the Australian government react in such a harsh way, you know? Because they're meant to, they're paid to, and they're part of the, They're part of a, a. We won't go into great details about the fact. Part of a world system that knows this change is coming, and is doing everything it can to seed the world in negativity and fear and suspicion. When now we now live in a world where many people, when they walk past another person, they think you might have something that's going to make me sick. And when they go outside, they put a mask on because they're scared to breathe the air. But what's bizarre about that is when you put the mask on, I remember as a kid, I was told, 
You breathe in the good air and you breathe out the bad air. That's a mantra we got as a kid. Well, now what we've been made to do is to breathe in the bad air and breathe out the bad air and breathe in the bad air. We don't even get it out of our system. It's like we've been poisoned from within in every possible way. Their job is to sow fear and mistrust. And they've all credit, all credit to them, and I've got to give them credit for this. They've done a brilliant job. They've done a stunning job. You just need in to look at the face happen. of that young girl that you had on the newspaper to see what a, a good job, and I hate calling it a good job, but from their point well, of view, yeah, it's had the desired effect, right? It has, and remember, that we've got a five-year-old about to go to school that wants to kill something straight away. It's sowed within them already. That anger is already there. They're bloody five, for God's sake. They are just little children that should be just beaming, pure innocence. And what have we done? Hold that we've thought, guys. It. Hold that thought. We're on the break. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go anywhere. There we go now. Oh. Hang on, I need to get the guys back. Hang on, get the guys back. I hung up on everyone. There we go. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to hang up on you guys. I got that excited there. I hung up on everyone. And um, we'll be back in a couple of seconds, folks. Three minutes. Go and get yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee. And if I could ask Evan or Stephen to restart your camera over at that end, um, that'd be awesome. Thank you very much. We'll be back in a second, guys. Don't go anywhere. guys try and stop and start your camera again yep. thank you Let's see if that helps it hopefully it'll kick in this time no, no, no. doesn't seem to want to restart which is weird uh -oh. Oh, i'll call box. you back in a second okay 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 folks stand bear with me bear with me we'll be going back down under in a moment There we go, there we go. Okay, one minute, we'll be back, folks. Okay. Now I want to remind everyone, go and check out ouralienancestry.net. That's ouralienancestry.net. You don't have long left before the next installment, folks. Please check that out. Like I say, it's one of the best online events, and I've been at a number of them now, and each time it raises the bar. I can't recommend it highly enough, and we all need to get on board, because we've all got a role to play towards the end of the year in this ceremony. These things ain't going to do themselves, folks. We need to participate. We'll find out more about that after the break.
Oh, yeah, that's right. Scott. Welcome back, ladies I, I, and gentlemen. But <laughs> Evan and Stephen Strong, all the way from down under with me here today. They tried to send me a link to a Facebook page there, but either I'm blocked or they're blocked or something's blocked. Okay. Scott doesn't like um, Facebook links. I just remembered that. Yeah, it's bad that way. It is bad. So, I, I'm thinking um, easiest um, if we link your channel in and, and, and people um, just link into your channel for that ceremony. I think that's the easiest way to do it. No problem, man. No problem. We'll yep. get that. We'll get that all sorted. So what else, guys? We've got 27 minutes left. Where do you want to go? Well, let's. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we'll talk about this now. What we uh, some archaeology turned up in America, and we decided that that looked deadly. It sort of really changes the history of America. So we've done a show that indirectly is based around America, and we've got, I think, Dr. Rita Louise, Leonard O'Neill, who uh, does the same sort of job you do there, and Paul and Phoebe. Paul and Phoebe. And it's really interesting because um, Paul and Phoebe have something, and they're going to be talking, well, second last, we're going to talk with Leah again. And Paul and Phoebe have some photographs there. And it's funny how they've turned up now. Mm. And they put them on their computer, and their computer crashed. And they both spend the night praying that four photographs they could recover. And half by whatever they think, Providence, we're not sure, they did recover those photos. And for the first time ever, those photos will put, be put up publicly. And what's fascinating about these photos is the original people believe in what's called the rainbow serpent. And everyone thinks that's, you know, this, this massive long serpent that does all this sort of stuff is a myth. Well, it's not because they photographed it. They were with elders. They did. Um, they're doing a spirit. They're talking about their spiritual journey around the world. They went into America. They went to Mongolia. They went Dogon. to Siberia. They went with the Dogon. They went with the Maoris. They went with the original people. They've been going around the world, and they've got four photographs which have never been shown before. And when I saw them, I put on my very, very best cynical, rational, conditioned mind to find a way of explaining away what I saw couldn't be the rainbow serpent that's about 30 metres long. And it reminded me of another film we've seen, haven't we, Evan? Yeah, we saw that. I think that was about two years ago. Yeah. And it was, um, you know, um, shaky kind of phone footage. But it was this um, kind of, I wouldn't say ripple. A hump a in the hump water. The water. And um, it was you could hear all the original people. Uh, all screaming out. It's, it's back, it's back. It's back, it's back. The rainbow serpent has come back. And you can see this massive hump. And it goes for about 15 metres. And they've got film of the whole thing and it's moving through the creek and every original pe person there said the same thing it's the rainbow serpent but i'm sure white fellas will say no no it was six crocodiles swimming together but not surfacing <laughs> or, or logs running up the hill the wrong way but have a look at it oh, we're not going to show you that one we're going to show you one where you can't say that it is the cut i mean i'm not going to say what it's like Okay, we're giving you a free show on the 21st, but this one isn't, of course, because you've got to pay 26 bucks. But remember this, ladies and gentlemen, that's 26 Australian dollars, which is worth nothing in the rest of the world except Mongolia, or maybe not even there. So it's not that much. But that particular photograph is the first time it's ever been, or for them, it's the first time it's ever been shown anywhere in the world publicly. And I swear to you, you can put your best rational, cynical mind on and you will not come up with any explanation other than that's not right. Mm. Now, the original people say the serpent will come back when the change is taking place. We thought that that particular session should go last because it really does open up that equation and it relates to what we talk about in the beginning. Now, the reason why we picked up America, and we're going to do it in more detail, is we've looked at America for quite some time and there are countless sites in America that go back tens and hundreds of thousands of years. But mainstream hangs on to the narrative they've been given by their masters that 12,000 years ago, the, some people come down through Siberia and walked through Canada and came down and started America. Well, they've found footprints that are 23,000 years old, and these ones are different. 
And Evan, could you just read these two passages there from the, the, the scientists involved in this? The evidence is very convincing and extremely exciting. Uh, says Tom Higgum, an archaeological scientist and radiocarbon expert at the University of Vienna. I am convinced that these footprints are genuinely are of the age claimed. The dates raise questions about when and how humans from Siberia settled in the region, with evidence growing that they skirted along the Pacific coast while inland routes were entrenched in ice. The authors of the study say the footprints give credence to contentious evidence, which we know about, mm. um, of even earlier signs of settlement in the <laughs> Americas. Uh, the paper makes a very clear, a very compelling case that these footprints are, are not only human, but they're older than 20,000 years. Now, what that means, ladies and gentlemen, it goes on further, says research journals are dotted with claims of even early sites. And they talk about of humans in California 130,000 years ago. Well, we know we've got so many skulls in America that are original. We know that they did the study of the Tupu and the Gee speaking people in the Amazon and found out their closest relatives were the Australian original people. We have all that evidence anyway. But this one is the one that's tipped the whole story over. What we're now finding is that basically there were two groups in Australia and the original people were there first. So we're going to go down that path and we're going to look at, we're going to put together all the different evidence that they say is dotted in other pieces of work and make the point that, remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's now been agreed there was another group in, in America before the American Indians we know of today. Well, and I want to make a point. I've got Sorry. a good friend, because... um, Nacy. It's the guy that sent a super chat in earlier, and he, he would love to speak to you guys at some point. He's from the Ojibwe, Ojibwe or Anishinaabe tribe in oh, yeah. North America. And we done a Freaky Friday with some original people from down under as well. And there was a guy, John, who had been up to America had met with the Anishinaabe tribe and they were able to converse back and forth in their own tongues because the language was so similar between the Anishinaabe and the Paleo-Australians, First Nations people. It was like there was no difference. So there's another connection right there. There is. Can I, can I tell you a story too now you've brought that up? We knew a guy called Attila Flink who was the world expert on the Magyar language. And he was trying to prove that the Magyar language was original. And he told me a story when he was alive. And it's a well-known story, but it's worth bringing up because it backs up what you said. When he came to Australia, the first time he came to Australia, he was in charge of a Hungarian group of migrants who came across on the Snowy Mountain Rivers when they were making the hydroelectric scheme. And because he was educated, they made him the head of the gang. So what was happening was I was sitting down talking in Hungarian and some original people, and we know which tribe they were. It's Darkingyong, where Uncle Diani Bev came from and where Karyong is. And they started speaking to them in their tongue, and they spoke back in Hungarian. He said, we could understand each other perfectly. He said, that's when I realised that Magyar, which is a language that doesn't fit in to the whole of Europe, is a more ancient language, but it comes from the Australian language. And, of course, the, the strongest and the closest link between the Australian original people is in America. I want to make that point. And when we got that information where they said, OK, we've given up now. Yeah, OK, there was someone here first. Then we feel like now is a time to revisit America and look at the truth of what took place. And I, what it does, and I, pe people need to understand this, but you need to understand that we're going back hundreds of thousands of years living like original people, like the Druids were living, like the pagans were living, like the American Indians were living, like the Inuit were living. And this was going on for hundreds of thousands of years. And this went on continually until about 6,000 years ago when we started to settle and farm and compete against nature. And more importantly, men took over spiritual roles or solely women's. And we lost our connection with women and we lost our connection with the land. What I'm trying to say here is that for such a long period of time, we were living with nature. Okay, okay, fine. There were, there were two, there were earlier civilizations like Atlantis was one that came and fell. 
Exactly. Yeah, sure, that happened. But if you look at the long picture and you go back hundreds of thousands of years, these are aberrations where we lose our way. These earlier civilizations, you've got to remember something about them. They all fell. And the story of Atlantis is it fell on its own sword, which is what's happening right now. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give a little bit of a context about the fact that humans don't normally live fighting against nature, polluting it, and being in constant warfare and selling things and doing what we do today. Humans used to live properly with nature, with the spirits, and we were divine. And this was heaven on earth. What we have today is hell on earth, and they're creating that. And we, we're trying to put that in to give us context. And there's Evan, he's put the footprints up. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, the beauty of this is, if it was in Africa, they'd say they're monkeys, wouldn't they? Huh. They'd say, oh, they're just bloody monkeys. Well, you can't do that in America because there weren't any. It just didn't happen. So therefore, what we're seeing in America and the New Mexico site changes everything because it changes a lot of other things because we've got sites to go back to 60, 100, 160, 200, 300,000 years. Well, here's the point. They didn't walk there. They sailed there. And we think that sailing across to other continents only happened 40 or 50,000 years ago. No, we have no concept and understanding of how long our tenure has been on this planet. So that is going to be a major issue we're going to look at in our presentation. We're going to do the archaeology of that. And then we're going to, we're going to do this one and the one that follows, the next one that follows in January, not the December one, we're just having blackfellas on again, and they're going to be. It's going to be called first yarns, and they're going to tell stories. So what we decided to do is we've got three whitefellas on this time, haven't we? Yeah. And they're going to tell stories, and then after that we're going to have some blackfellas on telling stories to get a nice balance and make it in the, the form of Wirichin, blackfella, whitefella, dreaming. So we're going to put those two together. So ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to do in America is we're going to start by actually talking about what we spoke about with you, Kev, and we'll do some of that stuff again about the fact that we're going to do that free one. But then what we're going to try and do is explain to people that the way we're living now is an aberration. And every time we go down this path, we fall apart. And then we go back to living with nature again. Now, this is what's happening right now. And I need to make a point, too, while we're doing this. I got, I got a couple of comments the last couple of days about saying that the last ceremony failed and we brought out negative energy. And I want to respond to that. I want to make the point the last ceremony did not fail because the Mayan spoke of two roads. Before that last ceremony, I couldn't see two roads, but I can now. During the last year, a lot of people say this has been appalling. It's been appalling, and I'm going to use Charles Dickens here, it's been the best of times and the worst of times. And people are not looking at the best of times. The best of times, and I want to make a point here, I'm old, very old actually, and I was around in the 1960s. And I remember being told, as I was about to be called up, that it would be against the law and I would be locked up in jail for two years if I did not agree to go to Vietnam and shoot people I've never met and have no issue with. And then people marched in the streets and ch things changed soon after. And remember what happened after we marched in the streets. For we had the hippie generation. There was love and peace and everyone was changing their mindset because we were going through Vietnam, the war, and then we fought against it and we walked in the streets. And sometimes in Australia, there were 100,000 people. Well, a week and a half ago, there were 500,000 people in Melbourne. There were 200,000 people in Brisbane, 300,000 people in Sydney. We never had those numbers in the 60s and 70s. And I know what happened after that. For 10 years, the world changed a lot. And it looked like it was going to get better. Then they took over it. Well, this is stronger. And when I see hundreds of thousands of people in Romania, in France, all around the world, united and standing together, I look upon this as a positive. I don't see anything negative in this. And yeah, Mesref made a point. 
the next few years, and I've got a suspicion when it finishes, and I mentioned that, would be ugly and brutal. But he also said this was a gift. And people need to understand that it is a gift. You can't lance a boil until you can see it. And now we can see it. So I want people to realise that those people who say that that ceremony brought out some sort of badness, it did not. It split the two roads. And every day I see more people. And remember, this is not a, a, a needle thing. This is all about whether people think that treating people differently and oppressing some people and doing horrible... Well, we won't go through what's happened in Australia. They've been laid down and people have been forced back. All horrible things are happening here. Whatever you've got elsewhere, believe me, it's worse here. But like you said, Kev, it's got to be. And that's my point. What's coming and what I see around the world right now is the best of times because people march together. It was in London. I saw this beautiful setup in London where they were walking down there and they spontaneously broke into a Pink Floyd song. Another brick in the wall. It was stunning. It was brilliant. You know, there's I been some believe... times, though, Stephen, over these last two years, and I was talking to my friend last night, Nano Girl, about this, and, and she was really struggling with all the changes going on a couple of months mm. ago, but thankfully she, she looks at the world the way we're looking at it right now. But I was saying to her, you know, when I was doing the shows with her, or even when I was sitting alone some days, I was having to ask myself, what's wrong with me? Because I can see how the world sucks right now. We've, we're all under it. We're all under pressure. But at the same time, I am really, really positive, really excited. Now, I, I don't know why. And you guys have come along and you've kind of um, focused me in on, on the fact we are going through these changes. But I, I've managed to maintain a different mindset, very positive. And yet these are the worst of times. But at exactly the same time, I'm excited. I'm full of anticipation because I know we've got so, to go through here for what comes next. Yeah. Exactly. That's really important, Kev, because, yes, they can overwhelm us with their negativity, but we've got to stand above it. And remember, this is about us. And I, well, uh, like Alan Parsons, an original elder that rings us often, was telling us about the march in, um, in Brisbane, and he said there were people who had and hadn't taken it. There were young people. No, this is one interesting point. He said there were all sorts of people there. He said, but what worried him the most is between the ages of 12 to 25, no one of that age. And we know why. Because they got them in the schools and they just sucked the life out of them. And we've got to go back to our children We've got to change our education system and we've got to go to our children and tell them, don't get depressed by this, there's a change ahead. And I believe the rocks and the rings, they decided themselves. By the way, I've got to make this point. Two weeks ago, I didn't know about this thing on December the 21st, second rather, I didn't know anything about it. It was their decision. It's their way of giving people something to aim towards. And remember, think about this. There was a ceremony done last year at Uluru. There's one being done this time round and a third one. Three. Think about that number. That is the sacred trilogy. That's what this is all about. And you're right, Kev, to keep that positivity amongst all this because there is a change afoot. It is happening. And what we've got to do is make it happen. And what they're asking, they're asking us to do what we did a year ago to do it again. And then believe in it. And when you've come away, and many people have said to me, when that, that meditation, I still get people writing me and saying, it changed me. I feel better because of it. We'll do it again and do it a third time. And by the time the third time's happened, we will have changed this planet. And it really will become a matter of, if you don't fit into this change, you will be asked by, not by me, not by me, you will be asked by the planet to vacate premises and you will not be given the right to incarnate back on this planet for quite some time. That part I know is true. What I also know is true is that, Kev, that when you keep that positivity, it will catch on to others as it goes around. So this is an important time for us. And, oh, one other thing I did want to also mention, um, at the end of this particular presentation arc, we've done all that, we're doing our, is it six or seventh session with Mesref? 
Oh, I think it's seventh. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a seventh for, uh, session with Mesrev. And as you know, Kev, you've heard what's happened quite a few times. Yeah. And I've still got people telling me, oh, you're making it up or Leah is. And I say to them one thing, listen to what's being said. Look at our reactions because I have no idea what I'm going to get until I speak to Leah. We make sure of that. And I can assure you we're not making up anything. This is someone that's been watching us for a long time that knows more about us than we ever will. And this time around, we're doing something different. We're going to do something, and I'm actually going to tell you a story now, which actually gave me the motivation, and it's the first question I'm going to ask. There's a gentleman in Australia called Duncan Rhodes that runs a magazine called Nexus, and he's right in the forefront of this change that's taking place. And he's well known. And he told me a story, and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing with Messer at this time told me a story about his dog that was dying. And as you know, a lot of people now uh, treat animals like they treat people, which is a great thing, by the way. Don't give, That's not a criticism. We should be treating everything on this planet the same way we treat people. It's a good step forward. And he told me, he called in this animal whisperer that can talk to all animals. Yes, I know, ladies and gentlemen, that sounds bizarre. But uh, I can yeah, tell you... This is the Kev Baker Show. I have got a resident <laughs> animal whisperer. I'm way ahead of you guys there. I'm in all this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know that. I'm fully aware of that. I'm sort of just trying covering for the two people here that might still have a cynical um, ounce inside them. I've got to get rid of that part last bit. He said that he brought her in to his house. And when, he got, when she got inside the house, she looked at um, Duncan. And he said to Duncan, get out of here. You're the problem. And Duncan was quite shocked. He even got a bit teary. He thought, what? I asked you to come and help my dog and you're blaming me. I didn't hurt it. I don't want it to die. He said, leave the room. I cannot talk to this animal while you're here. You're the hindrance. So Duncan went to the naughty corner in another room and waited to be called back in. Now, after about 20 minutes, he was called back in. And, he and this woman told him, this is what's happened. This is what he said has taken place. Is this animal wants to pass over. But you're, because you love it so much and it loves you, it's hanging in there to stay with you, to make you happy. It's got a job, and this is where it gets a little bit weird, but I know your listeners will be comfortable with this. It says when it goes on the other side, it's a teacher of other dogs. And what it does, it teaches their souls and gets the, the sort of feral and wild instincts out of it so when the dogs come and are meant to be with humans, the dogs can teach unrequited pure love because the humans are losing it. And the story was that animals now are taking up the cudgels to teach us about things that our soul should have that we're losing. And I thought to myself, whoa. And then the questions I'm going to ask, and of course the question I asked in that, that one to Mesref, is, is this true? Could this be real, that animals like dogs, cats, and many others are now working with us to help heal our soul? And so the questions I'm going to be asking him will firstly be about animals. I'm going to ask about dogs. I'm going to ask about Evan's rabbit that just passed on. And we're going to ask about those, our brothers and sisters on this planet, that we still have not recognised properly. But I'm going to go further. I'm going to include the trees in this because we now know trees can communicate. Yeah, with each other. They're with each all, other. They're all connected yeah. by a network. And when one's sick, they feed it more, don't they, Evan? Yep. And they look after them, which is something we haven't got either. My God, we've got to learn from nature. Nature's got so much to teach us. And I'm going to ask, I'm asking questions about that. And one of the questions I'm going to ask is this. I've been told by two psychics that the no forehead skull we have, which is obviously not from this planet, was called here, not by humans, not by reptilians, but by the trees. I'm going to ask him, could that possibly be true? And if so, how? How could that happen? How could they do that? I mean, some people would say trees, they just sit there, they don't do a thing. Well, they're wrong. They're wrong. And if people get their self and wrap themselves around a tree, I know some people say, oh, that's a hippie thing. It may well be a hippie uh, thing. We look at forests and trees on here with a, a very different opinion to the most of the world. 
I see them as like a magical playground. That they're absolutely alive. They're in communication. It's a different world when you go into the forest. It really is. So I, I'm with you on this one, man. Well, that's what we want. I want him to tell us about that. I want some wisdom for us to understand. And this is part of how we've got to be in the future, where every animal on this planet. I have an elder, Uncle now, Matthew. Now, Stephen, um, Stephen, before we lose time on TFR, yeah. I want to tell people visit ouralienancestry.net. And please, if you do one thing this weekend, make it come into this online conference. Mystical Ways and Historical Days, OurAlienAncestry.net. A big massive thank you to Evan and Stephen for all the work they're doing. I know it makes them uncomfortable, but I do love these guys. And I'll be back tomorrow, wherever you are, make a TFR and a Denny Thanks, man. Huge thank you. We're still on YouTube with um, over 100 people there. We've got about 10, 7 or 10 over on Twitch. Any last messages for the audience before I let you guys get back about your, your summer's day down there? We're getting ready for snow out here. It's absolutely freezing. It's dipping below zero. Evan, you're making me sick there. You're looking like you're sweating already. Just sweating. <laughs> guys, when the world gets back to normal, I'm coming down under. We're going to get a beer. But um, tell the audience yeah. everything you want to get out there before I let you go, guys. This is your time. On you go. Last thing I'd like to say is if you're going to make a decision between the next two conferences, come to the free one. Please come to that one. Put your name down and become part of this. It's just so damn important. The rocks, the rings, and all of these objects are magical, and they want to use their magic to help heal the planet. They were found now because this is when they wanted to be found. And what they're in, and extending to you is an invitation to join them in healing this planet. And there's nothing more important. Evan, uh, there's just a series of pictures you'll see there yep. of what took place last time I this happened. That. I created that, yes. Thank you, Evan. It's like um, before <laughs> you guys came on, I was showing people the flash that occurred. Um, Uncle Donnie down under, he vividly remembers the flash taking place. And I was trying to explain to the audience how the sky went from just a sky to something purpley, blue. You can't even describe what that sky t transformed into, guys. It's amazing. Everything was amazing at that moment. The human resonance increased a hundredfold. There was a flash coming out of Uluru. There was a UFO flying above. All the signs that humans have, they gave them to you. What more can you want? We really <laughs> exactly. couldn't give you more than what we got there and what we've got up. And if you go to our website, you can see articles where we put it all up for people to see. And remember, that happened the first time. They want it to happen at the solstice the same time again. It will happen. Join us. It's the most important ceremony. Oh, no, there's one on December the 4th. The original people have got another one then, haven't they, too? Yeah, there's a few happening. Yeah, but that's just their ceremony. This one belongs to the globe. We can all do this together. So please come and join us. Nothing more important than this. Nothing more important. I know that isn't you. because then um, when you guys come on, and it's not you guys per se, but it's the information, it's the topics, I get the goosebumps. I don't get that every show we do. I'm not saying that I know for a fact, but I know that these guys are on to something that we really need to be paying attention to right now. I feel blessed that, that they come onto the show here. Um, it's like a dream come true. You couldn't meet two nicer guys. And like I say, these online conferences, I've been lo lost for words, and I'm rarely lost for words. All right. So, guys, thank you for everything. Love you a bit. Pleasure. Stay strong, especially down under. And um, we'll talk again soon. I'll see you at the conference, right? Definitely. Thank you, mate. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No. Guys, I appreciate everything you're doing. Honestly, keep up the good work, okay? We will. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Was that a show and a half? Yes, we went very, very close to the algorithm today. The time is short. Time is short, ladies and gentlemen. If we don't talk about these kind of things now, we may never have the chance to do so again in the future. And I really, really do believe that Evan and Stephen Strong are at the heart of something far bigger than them. But they've become almost like two conduits, bringing us the information that we all need. 
all of us need right now. I want you to do not me a favor, not Evan or Stephen a favor, do yourself a favor. Take these perceived differences and take the things that we've fallen out over the past two years and throw them the fuck out the window. Because it sounds cliche, but we are all stuck in this together, thick and thin, and we're the ones that are going to make a difference. You know, and Papa used to say, if you want to see a change in the world, you got to go and do it. And these changes, they're not going to happen themselves. We've got to prove that we're up to it and we can do it. And I know you can. I know I'm going to be there. I'll help to simulcast this upcoming global event, which is mind-blowing. I'm really looking forward to that. I feel blessed even been asked. You know, if I could do that, it'd be an honour and a privilege. And I want to see all of you here for that as well, as much as you can. But you honestly are the people that can change this. We can do it together. We really, really can. They want us fighting. They want us arguing. That's where they absolutely want us. That's when they high-five each other. They hate when they see people coming together. They absolutely hate that. And if we don't come together now, then we're all surely going to fall apart. So with that said, I want to thank Evan and Stephen Strong. And I want to thank a, a good, strong contingent from down under as well. Seen a couple of new names in there today. Uncle Donnie, Auntie Luna as well. Big shout out to all of our Australian listeners. A big shout out to everyone. And uh, thank you all for being here today. Wow, what a way to round out the weekend. Don't forget, at the weekend, we have got this going on. Our Alien Ancestry, Mystical Ways and Historical Days, Chapter 16. We've got Leah there, we've got Leonard O'Neill, Dr. Rita Louise, and we've got Paul and Phoebe Hugen, Hugendijk. There you go. That sounds like a very... I'd say Dutch name there. I'm going to go for Dutch. I'll probably be proven totally wrong. But folks, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this half as much as I did. Damn, I love those guys. I love that woo. But I'm going to love you. I'm going to leave you. And I'm going to have to get some music on for you here. I'll be back tomorrow with Freaky Friday. And I think we may even have a pre-show beforehand as well. And we're one day closer to the weekend. The weekend of streaming is almost upon us. Whether it's Saturday, whether it's Sunday, whether it's both. Keep an eye open, folks, on the other YouTube channel, KBS Live Streaming, for more information. And if you want to take part in a round table discussion, nothing to do with me, but we host it over on the KBS Discord server. Auntie Luna, Nano Girl, Polly, all of the gang over there, Jewels of the Flame, they're all there. They're all there every weekend. You can go and hang out. And you can have your say on one of the most active roundtables that I've seen in the community in a long time. It's great stuff. You don't need me to tell you to be the change. I'm already watching some of you doing it. So on that note, I'm going to love you. I'm going to leave you. And we are out of here. Fraternity, equality before the law. The liberty of a citizen cannot be so easily taken away and trifled with. If you are doing your duty to stand up for the truth, you cannot be muzzled, you cannot be threatened, you cannot be intimidated. A whole slew of cases cannot be put against you. We will fight and we will die if we have to. The truth will prevail.